Hi, it's Dennis Daly. Sometimes when I watch one of the food channels, I get really tickled watching Bobby Flay. Because I remember him when he was a much younger guy. He'd come out with his first book, Boy Meets Grill. He came to my apartment complex in Los Angeles and cooked out on the apartment complex's big grill. He noted that a lot of people just like to be outside, and there is some magic in grilling. I think that people love love the idea of go, going out uh, outside to cook. Uh, it creates a it becomes a center um, centerpiece of a of a party. And also, I think it reminds people of their childhood for some reason. You know, as kids running around, there's always somebody grilling outdoors. Your mom, dad, uncle, somebody or another. You know, it's always been hot dogs and hamburgers, but it's not just hot dogs and hamburgers anymore. I remember my dad did not like to, we call it barbecue. I don't know how that phrase got started as a euphemism for grilling. But he didn't like the taste of charcoal. But whenever we would visit my aunts and uncles in Washington, D.C., and this was 30-some years ago, they always cooked out. And that was the one thing I look forward to. My big memories of those trips were the cookouts in their backyard. No, I know. And, and, and actually, you know, I have memories of, like, grilling lobsters and corn and stuff, you know, when I was, like, four years old. That, that's why people say to me, you know, I have this new book out called Boy Meets Grill, and they say, you know, how long did it take you to write? And I say 30 years, which is really true. I mean, it started a long time ago. And I think that even in hamburgers, like, I even like my hamburgers a little overcooked outdoors because there's just something that reminds me of, like, the flavor of an overcooked hamburger. Just had something about it that was magic. Yeah, you look back and at some of those really awful-looking hot dogs that were singed on one side and not on the other. Uh, unless you really take the time, it's an irregular kind of cooking, but by its very nature... You're in kind of a less controlled situation than if you're than if you're inside. But I think that grilling is really practical. I think people are really intimidated by the grill. And I don't know whether it's usually the size of the grill or if it's about the heat or they're worried about things are going to stick. I'm not really sure what it is. Maybe it's a little bit of everything. Um, but grilling is really practical. And the questions that I get asked very often by people who like to cook outdoors or who would like to cook outdoors are things that are you know very simple to answer like for instance you know people say to me i love to cook vegetables on the grill but they always seem to fall through the grates cut them bigger <laughs> i mean that's really i mean it sounds it's almost obnoxious the, the answer but it's true um you know i cook my vegetables whole and then I, I i grill them whole and then i cut them for some reason people have been used to cutting all their vegetables up before they uh, before they grill them right? they're going to boil them yeah, I don't know what they're going to do. And then they're going to put them on the grill. It becomes like a balancing act on the grill. The other thing people say to me is, I love cooking steaks on the grill, but they always get uh, overcooked. Take them off sooner. I mean, it's really, it, it's, it's, you know, if you think of a grill as a flame, you know, as a sort of a burner with some grates on top, I think it, it, I think it breaks it down much simpler. And that's really what it is. I even bring pots out. And, you know, I steam open mussels and clams and stuff right on top of the grill. Because, really, that's what it is. It's just a burner that just happens to be outdoors. You know, one other memory that comes back is in my parents' house back in Indiana, we had a gas log in the fireplace. looked like a real burning log, but it was a gas log. And many, many years ago, 35 or more, our local power plant had a problem. We didn't have electricity for four days. So what my dad did was to get, he worked in plumbing and heating, he made a metal frame to hang a pot over the gas fireplace logs. Right. And it was the height of simplicity, but it worked. And that's how my mom cooked for about four days. Yeah. I See, I, I, see this, to me, grilling, people make grilling out to be much more complicated than it is. And it's really the simplest form of getting something cooked. I mean, you know, think about it. It's some charcoal, or sometimes it's some briquettes, and it's a grate, and you got some heat. And you just throw something on the grill and let it happen. And what happens is, especially guys, guys either can grill or they think they can grill. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but that's the way it is. And what they do is is they come out and they put something on the grill. We're going to throw some steaks on here in a second. And the first thing they want to do is they want to, they want to touch it. They want to make sure it's not going to stick. They want to turn it over 40 times because they, they think they're really grilling. But in fact, what you should really do is, should I throw one on? Should I throw one in? Yeah, sure. I'm going to throw a steak on. I mean, I just, this is a ribeye steak. I just, you know, salt and pepper, or you can put like some fresh garlic and herbs and stuff if you want. And I throw it right in the grill. And you want to hear that sizzle. That's really important. Now, if you notice, I'm not going near that steak right now. I'm going to let it cook because I'm only going to turn the steak once. 
because I want it to get a really nice crust on one side, and then I'm going to turn it over. As soon as you start touching something on the grill when you put it on, that's when it starts to stick. Well, the first radio station I worked for was on the fourth floor of an old building that was owned by the Knights of Columbus. And, of uh-huh. course, they had a restaurant downstairs, so it was extremely convenient. An old guy named Jimmy, old crotchety fellow, used to cook down there. And that's one of the things he told me. He said, you turn a hamburger once. Absolutely. I turn chicken once. I turn steaks, fish, whatever it is, I turn them once. Now... This grill is a little high. If it starts getting kind of, if, if the steak catches on fire, I'll move it to a colder spot. Which, Should we turn the flame down a little? Well, I don't think so. I like, I, especially for steak, I want it to get nice and crusty. So the only way to do that and not overcook it is to make it sort of sear it, so to speak. So you need very high heat so that it gets nice and crusty on one side. Then you f- flip it over on the other side and let it cook for a few more minutes, and then your steak is really cooked. By the way, I did not tell the listeners this, but I've told you this before going on the air. I misunderstood what your last name was. The woman who called up to arrange the interview had a very strong British accent, and I thought she was calling you Bobby Filet. Right. It's Bobby Flay. It's Bobby Flay. And I thought, well, that's a neat stage name. Here's a guy who's doing grilling, and he's calling I, himself Mr. Filet. I know. Well, it's better than Mr. Food. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Which, um, you know, there is somebody out there named Mr. Food. But, um, no, Flay is my name, and uh, I just happen to like to cook and when I was a kid, when I was in grammar school, my nickname was Fish because they used to call me Filet Fish. But I see. We're, we're Irish? Moving. I'm an Irish guy from New Dennis York. Michael Daly here. So. Is that you? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> so we have something in common right off the bat, and we like to grill. Well, now, I got a couple of questions to ask. Can we go through the cuts of meat? Because I have made the mistake, and maybe it's because I'm a cheapskate, of buying the wrong cut of meat that when you put it on a grill turns to shoe leather. If you want it to be tender in this quick cooking mode, what are we looking for? Well, I like to use ribeye, which is what we're cooking now. Uh, um, Filet mignon tenderloin is obviously fantastic on the grill. Uh, Sirloins and strip loins, things along those lines. You know, you could cook flank steak and skirt steak, but you want to marinate that first. Maybe some kind of soy sauce, ginger, garlic kind of thing. Maybe an Asian-style marinade or some kind. Let's take a look at what the steak looks like. I just want to... I would put the mic down there, but I don't want to get it on fire. See, now, you see, you see how that looks? You got good grill marks there. Now, I'm going to turn it this way. I'm going to get those nice restaurant grill marks on there, which is key. <laughs> well, now, the reason this flame is so high is, and I didn't have too much advanced time before you got here, I wanted to try to get the grill metal itself as hot as I could. Or is that important? It was very important. What's happening is is that the briquettes or the charcoal, uh, the heat permeates up to the front, to, uh, permeates up to the grill, to the grates, and then the grates become very hot. And that's what it keeps it... You know, the, the grates keep the heat very even. As we look at this, there is that wonderful magic that is how food looks. I mean, I frequent Chinese restaurants a lot. Uh-huh. And, and no matter how it tastes, if it looks good, that enhances the whole eating experience. There's something you expect as far as the grill marks you talk about and that kind of thing in an outdoor cooked piece of beef. Well, it's really the, cr- it's really the, the texture of things. Like, let's take a look at the steak. Now, I'm going to turn this over. Okay, now you see what we're getting there? We're getting this great crust on the outside, and you're getting a nice crusty texture. So it's going to create a contrast of textures, in fact. Crusty on the outside, nice and uh, moist and silky and delicious on the inside, so that it becomes interesting for you to also eat as opposed to just taste. So that when you're chewing it, you're getting a contrast of textures, and that's exactly what you need. You talk about this almost with the same nuance as a wine taster. Well, you know, I mean, food and wine are obviously very related. There's all kinds of flavors, there's all kinds of textures, there's all kinds of qualities, both, you know, uh, from low quality to high quality. So whether you're talking about a steak, a piece of fish, or a vegetable, I mean, there's a lot to say. <laughs> Let's talk about things other than beef for a minute while these beautiful steaks are, are getting more done. Over the 17 or so years that you've been officially connected with, with restaurants, have the types of foods people have been grilling change that much? Is it still predominantly beef? Um, I think that, you know, there's, there was, there's been this push to move away from red meat, but I don't really particularly see it. You can't get into a steakhouse in New York. I mean, they're just packed, and there's so many of them. Um, you know, I think that we've been, co- especially grilling, we've been grilling a lot of beef outside, hamburgers to start, then steaks, um, 
Yeah, yeah, but now people are doing things like they're grilling lamb chops. You know, there's a recipe in my book for like lamb chops with mustard and molasses. Two ingredients, mm. just it just kicks up the whole barbecue. I mean, or the, I shouldn't say the barbecue, but the grill. Um, I'm gonna turn the steak over while we go, and then, of course, you know, fish. And I'll give you some tips on fish. People love to eat fish, and they love to grill fish, but again, sometimes they're intimidated by it. What I tell people is to start with some fish that um, are easier to grill, like swordfish and tuna. They're dense, they're steak-like, and they won't stick as easy. Uh, now, this grill is kind like of an... You, how do you like your steaks cooked? Medium well. Medium well. Yeah, just well, just leaving pink, not runny. All right. So, I like my medium rare, but we'll cook these a little bit more for you, because you have the microphone. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. This is kind of an industrial strength grill. The, uh, the, the grid iron of it is very large, chunky metal with some pretty hefty spaces between. This would not be an ideal grill for a hamburger, but what about putting aluminum foil on it? No, I think it will work for hamburger. You think so? I really do. You know, you know what's great about these? Th this, uh, this is like cast iron, and so yeah. what's, what's happening is it's going to really hold the heat like a cast iron pan. Mm -hmm. I see people People ask me, you know, can you grill indoors if you don't have a grill? Well, you can use a cast iron grill pan, and they really hold the heat very well. You're not going to get the same flavor, though. Also, there's some magic, even though this is not charcoal, to how much heat can be generated by briquettes. I remember going to a restaurant on the south side of Little Rock about 10, 15 years ago. Little Rock? You, Arkansas. You that, fixed your own steaks. Exactly. And there was this massive pit of charcoal briquettes. It must have been 10 feet square, and it amazed me how much heat was coming off this. Yeah. Well... You know, if you don't have if you don't have high heat, you really can't grill. I mean, and these grills now are, def are are designed to make sure that you can get high heat, especially like the gas grills. You know, people say to me, charcoal versus gas. What do you think? I like both of them. I like both of them for different reasons. There's pros and cons for both. Obviously, if you like the charcoal flavor, you're only going to get it from a charcoal grill, but it's harder to light. A gas grill. Look, why not use the technology that's out there now? You know, we're, we're if the pioneers had had propane, they would have used it. They would be using it right this second. Yeah, you're right. So, uh, I think that you know, a gas grill is is great to use. You press a few buttons, you turn a few knobs, you have great high, even heat. And then they have things like you know, you're talking about grates, porcelain coated grates, which is like grilling on a Teflon pan, mm. so it doesn't stick as much. I mean, why not use it? But remember. You can go out and buy a grill for five, six, seven thousand bucks now, but it's not going to grill the food for you, and it's not going to clean up for you either. <laughs> well, now are these done already? These are done. I mean, you want them around medium, medium well. They're they're pretty much done. And That's awfully quick. Do. Yeah, well, it's, it's because high of the high heat. It's the high heat, and I wasn't playing with the steaks. You know, I just turned them once, and that was the end of it. That's what makes it so easy. All right, why don't we nibble on some of this? Let's get over here. I brought some plates. And, of course, I brought paper towels. You don't know me well enough to know that I'm the world's messiest person. Well, I'm sure that will come, become clear very soon. We'll see. All right. Let, let's sit down on the same side here so we can talk while we're doing this. I'm going to let you... Let me serve you up a little? Yeah, please, so I can hold the microphone. Okay. Now, I uh, brought two... Um, You've, you've heard this joke, haven't you? What in, in some restaurants, what's the difference between the $12 steak and the $15 steak? What's the difference? You get a sharper knife. with the <laughs> I like that. You, yeah, you may have that. I, I will definitely use that for my restaurants. Now, is that the way you like your cook? Oh, that's lovely. See, I, I cook for my... Now, see, if this was for me, I would have cooked this less. But for you, you want you requested medium well, and in my business, the customer is king. So at this point, you're the customer. So we'll see. Well, now there's something to be said ab about this. I don't want to get into the whole issue of food safety, but my grand, my mother's generation went through a time when there was less refrigeration. People got sicker. There was more tainted meat. I did not know until I was 30 years old, and went to a decent steakhouse. That steak is not supposed to be like shoe leather. I mean, Absolutely not. My family cooked the thing. Why, I don't know why they would buy an expensive piece of meat and then cook the heck out of it. Yeah, there's no re no need to do that. If you buy an expensive piece of meat, I mean, I gotta, I, I'm going to have to start working on you. Because I, I want to, I, I, in, in the next 12 months, I have to convince you that you need to start eating your steaks le cooked less so you can taste the flavor of the meat. That's what happens. You know, people sometimes go overboard. You just want to add some flavors to enhance it. You buy an expensive piece of meat. You buy an expensive piece of fish, you just want to enhance the flavors of the, the natural flavors of that product. Otherwise, it's not worth it to buy an expensive piece of anything. Boy, I, my listeners are used to hearing me eat while I'm on this show. Could one of these two nice ladies walk around that corner and get me a Diet Pepsi? <laughs> and I'm going to play dumb because I left my wallet in my apartment. 
what is it like when you find somebody who has led such a sheltered life that they've really never had a nicely done medium or medium rare steak uh, and are tasting it for the first time? Well, uh, you know, it's like anything else. You need to experiment in life. So if it's if it's going to be as simple as tasting a steak that's a little less cooked, I think that's an easy project. And I'm actually cutting this with my fork. Well, you probably should use a knife, though. Yeah, but it just works. <laughs> what about pork on the grill? Is that a big item, or is that hard to cook? No, pork is fantastic on the grill, especially like pork tenderloin, pork chops. Those, that's you know, and that's a, pork is a great canvas. Chicken and pork are just great canvases for different kinds of marinades. Bobby, this is absolutely magnificent. Um, the thing that impresses me is you're the expert, but what you did, you know how to do it, is, is so simple, no one should be afraid to do this. Absolutely not. And people say to me, you know, what's your secret ingredient? The secret ingredient is no ingredient is secret. We just keep it really simple, really accessible. All the, fla all the ingredients and the main courses are very recognizable. So it's not like, you know, I, I sent you out to buy some quail that you shot out of the trees and we grilled it up. I mean, you can do that too, but why not? Well, now, there are certain areas of other things I want to get into. I mentioned in some cases you might want to put foil down for hamburger, but I guess unless you buy really cheap hamburger that's all fat, it's going to have some cohesion. The patty is. So it's not going to fall through the grill. But what about using foil for other things? I see people wrap ears of corn. Do you, are you a proponent of the, the ovening of food on a grill, or do you just like it out there? I like it out there, but if it's going to make it easier for you, I say, why not? If you want to wrap some corn in some foil, you know, I do pizzas on the grill, too, where I take the, I take the, uh, I take the dough and I throw it right on the grill, and then I make a really delicious pizza with every, you know, all kinds of different toppings. But what happens is sometimes the, 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 the pizza dough can start to get a little overcooked. That that's when I put some foil down on the grill and then put the dough back on top. Tell us about your cable network program while I eat. It's on the Food Network. It's called Hot Off the Grill with Bobby Flay. It's on every night. you got to check it out. We're, we're, every we're, night? Every night. Every That's night. a lot of work. No, I know. It's a lot of grilling. But uh, people seem to uh, be attached to the show. And we grill everything from, uh, you know, to fish, to meat. to We do paella on the grill. We do clam bakes right on the grill. Really interesting thing. Any, anything but a birthday cake, basically, I can put on the grill. I need to say something here that's obvious, but I would be remiss if I didn't. Being in broadcasting and news a long time, I've run across an awful lot of stories of people who tried to do this inside. This is not an inside kind of thing. I mean, you were talking about a dangerous situation you can create with the wrong kind of cooking inside. Right. I mean, grilling is really an outdoor event. Um, but... The great thing about, uh, like for instance, the recipes in, in Boy Meets Grill, you can take those recipes and you can you can cook them indoors. You can cook them on top of a stove. You don't have to actually cook them on a, in a grill. You can cook them in more conventional uh, techniques. I'd love to ask a question, but I'm too busy eating. You're eating. Well, that's good. Will you or, want me or, to ask you a question? Yeah, sure. <laughs> or, or talk about your restaurants. Well, we have Mesa Grill, which is, they're both in New York. Mesa Grill and Bolo. Mesa Grill is a Southwestern restaurant. It's a contemporary Southwestern restaurant. So obviously we employ lots of chili peppers and things along those lines for flavor. And then Bolo is a Spanish restaurant. Spanish, but through my eyes, it's not authentic. Spanish-Irish. It's Spanish. It's Spanish-New <laughs> York. Well, now, don't you hate it, though, the people who try to do Southwest or Tex-Mex cooking and think all you have to do is put so much chili in it, it burns your mouth. They yeah. don't know about the nuance. We like to say that we, uh, we employ chili peppers for accent, not injury. We don't want to hurt you. We don't want to burn out your mouth. That's not about that's not about cuisine. You know, we we like to uh, use chili peppers for the flavor that they have behind the heat. And some of them are fruity, some of them are earthy, some of them are musty, some of them are. I mean, they just they have such wonderful wide range of flavors. And we uh, we attempt to bring out all those natural flavors and to really season the, and flavor the food. Ever been to Santa Fe, New Mexico? Sure. The shop, the chili shop yep. there. Yeah, sure. I did a show from there once. I can't remember the lady's name, but a very short woman runs it. I was amazed at the numbers of different kinds of chilies. It goes on forever. And the thing about chili peppers is that they're they're called something different in every every region of Mexico. So you can't even, you know, they won't let you keep up with them. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Let's end this here by going through some basic things, if you will. 
on the negative side first, tell us the four or five mistakes you see most people make when they grill. Uh, okay, let's see. The fir- first of all, they don't put the, uh, the heat up very high, so that's one. you got to have high heat. Number two, when they grill something, uh, we were talking about it before, they put something on the grill, they immediately want to touch it, see if it's sticking. That's when it sticks. Definitely stay away from that. You know, um, as far as... Um, fish is concerned. Start with a, start with something that's more dense, something that's uh, meatier, like shark or swordfish or tuna. Vegetables when you grill them, grill them whole and then cut them. Well, I'll tell you, this has been my listeners don't know what time of day we're taping this. This has been my breakfast. Also, <laughs> this is absolutely magnificent. Great. Great. Well, I'll cook for you any time. So the key is just don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to grill. Get in there. Get to know your grill. Get intimate with your grill. Learn the hot spots. Learn the cold spots. And have a good time. And the book, again, is called? Boy Meets Grill. Cute name. Thank you very much. Bobby, thanks for coming My out pleasure. here. pleasure. Since the time of that interview, Bobby Flay has become a megastar. I'm Dennis Daly. <laughs>